Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, let's make a start. Uh, my name is uh, Patrick Hall. I'm the Mayor of the City of Canning. I declare the ordinary council meeting uh, open uh, for today. Uh, it's 18th of April 2003, Tuesday evening, and we're starting on time at 6 p.m. We start by acknowledging the Wadjuk people, the traditional custodians of the land, and we also pay our respects to elders, both past and present. Can I ask everybody here this evening to make sure your mobile phones are turned off or are on silent for the duration of the meeting, uh, particularly our councillors? This meeting is being live streamed via the city's YouTube channel. Council meetings are public meetings and any information you shall provide tonight will be recorded and may be publicly accessible. The council chambers are not a parliament and parliamentary privilege does not apply. Elected members and staff risk being held publicly, personally liable if their comments are defamatory or breach any duty of confidentiality. Statements made during council meetings are solely those of the person making them. Nothing expressed as a, at a council meeting can be attributed to the City of Canning unless it is adopted by resolution of its council. The confirmed minutes of a council meeting are the official record of that council meeting. Verbatim minutes are not required. Nevertheless, the City publishes a full recording of the meeting. Recordings of council meetings must not be copied, republished or reproduced without the City's express permission. Item two, attendance. We have the full council here this evening. Thank you, councillors, and good evening. Approved leave of absence. Uh, there are none at item 2.2. Disclosures of interest at item three. Uh, CEO Michael Littleton, can I get you to read to the meeting disclosures of interest? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in relation to item 3.1, declarations of financial interests, there are none. In relation to item 3.2, declarations of interest affecting impartiality, I've received two, uh, the first from Deputy Mayor uh, Kunza. In relation to item CD 00623, um, in so the nature of this association is I have a long, I have been, I've long been a volunteer at Conservation Centre that was established with the sole aim to help West Australia's endangered black cock and two populations. Given the proposed Janicott Eastern Link Road has been found to pose significant risk to local black cockatoo populations, there may be a perception that my volunteer role may adversely affect my impartiality. Uh, the second uh, declaration of interest affecting impartiality was received from Councillor Steve Parkinson in relation to item CD 00623, uh, states two of Janicott Eastern Link Road. Uh, the nature of his interest is I am a council delegate on the Janicott Air, uh, Airport Community Aviation Group. Uh, thank you, CEO. We move on to item uh, item four, which is announcements by the presiding member. I do have an announcement tonight, and I'll just uh, read a prepared statement. I'd like to advise the council and the community of the recent passing of Mr Vic Varischetti, formerly of Riverton, who recently passed at the age of 92. Mr Varischetti was officially known as Mr Vara or Mr V and was born on December the 2nd, 1930, in Mundajong. He was a brother to five sisters and uh, seven... Uh, five sisters and seven brothers. He married his first wife, Gloria, in 1959. They moved to Tudor Avenue in Riverton. The Varischettis were true pioneers of this district at a time when the area around where we are today was little more than a scattering of farmlets and paddocks. Vic and Gloria had two sons, Victor and Mark, and Vic quickly became involved in the Riverton district. And during the late 60s, uh, Vic became involved at the Riverton Junior Football Club shortly after its establishment as a club way back in 1964. He served as a coach and on the Riverton Junior Football Club committee. And in 1972, Vic assisted in the formation of the Rossmoyne Junior Football Club and advocated to East Romano to ensure the club was started. He was instrumental in its formation and his legacy is therefore shared by that club too. In 1973, he coached the Riverton Junior Football Club's first premiership, the under-11 reserves featuring uh, my younger brother Martin and family names like Donaldson, Murdoch, Polglace, Heal and Minson, and featuring a 10-year-old Earl Spaulding who would later play for Carlton in the VFL. This first premiership win for the club was featured in the Western Australian newspaper with a photo of the team and Mr Varischetti. Vic's wife Gloria died in 1975 and some years later he remarried uh, to Audrey. They became a force of nature in this district and were incredibly well known in this area due to their heavy involvement in so many community groups and associations. In 1976, Vic, Vic uh, coached the club's first senior premiership 
As the under-14s defeated Linwood at East Fremantle Oval, I played in that game with names that were synonymous with the area at that time. Strauss, Hill, Chapman, Harding, Carter, Buckman, uh, Fogarty, Kershaw and Vodanovic. The game also featured two young boys who would later play for the West Coast Eagles, being Peter Wilson for Linwood and Paul Harding, who was coached by Vic at Riverton and later played for St Kilda in the VFL and also featured in a premiership with the West Coast Eagles as their ruckman alongside Peter Wilson. Vic Varaschetti remained with the club for decades after that win and was a mentor to many young men and helped to shape their lives. And aside from his role at the Riverton Football Club, Vic volunteered extensively, particularly with seniors, and he called the bingo each week at the Herald Avenue Senior Centre, where Audrey, his wife, was heavily involved as both the president and on the committee. He was also the caller for the mega bingo at Friday nights at Cannington until only a few years back. He was well loved. He touched the lives of and had a lasting impression on many young people in this district. In February 2020, Richard Brown, the president of the Riverton Football Club, wrote to Deputy Mayor Ben Kunza on behalf of the club, requesting that Riverton Pavilion be renamed the Vic Varaschetti Pavilion. Ben is a junior life member of the club and I'd played in the club's first premiership and known Vic practically for my entire life, so it wasn't difficult, the decision to offer our support. At that time, Vic had been an integral member of the club for 51 years and had not only been a long-time coach, he'd been a past president and a member of the executive committee for decades. In August 2020, I had the honour as Mayor, accompanied by Deputy Mayor Kunza and other councillors and members of the community, to officially declare the pavilion the Vic and Audrey Varaschetti Pavilion, and it was an incredibly proud day for the entire extended Varaschetti family. This building is an enduring reminder of Vic's impact here in Riverton and the commitment and dedication he had for this club and the Riverton district generally. But Vic was not the first Varaschetti recognised by Canning Council. At the ordinary council meeting way back in January 2002, council considered a report regarding a request from Mr Wayne Cannell for council to provide a bench with a plaque commemorating Mr Cannell's grandmother, Mrs Santina Varaschetti, to be placed near the canoe launching ramp at Riverton Bridge. Mrs Varaschetti had purchased land beside Riverton Bridge way back in 1935. Her husband died in 1942 and she had raised 11 children from that premises. The report noted that many of Mrs Varaschetti's descendants still lived in the area. They did. She was Vic Varaschetti's mother. On behalf of the Canning community, I'd like to express my condolences to the family and acknowledge Mr Varaschetti's contribution and distinguished service. Mr Vera leaves behind his two sons, Victor and Mark, eight grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Thank you. Uh, item five, reports of delegates without discussion. Councillors, are the Councillor Kunza. Uh, thank you, Mayor Holt. Look, I just wanted to quickly say that uh, on the 22nd of March, I attended the South East Metropolitan Regional Road subgroup um, as it, through my role as a delegate on that group. Uh, I just wanted to make comment given that it was a discussion on council quite, uh, not that long ago, that the council, uh, the city was successful in obtaining an extra $267,000 to help cover the cost of Webb Street, much of which was not our fault as a city. Um, so I just wanted to take a moment to congratulate staff. I know at the time when we were discussing it and got a bit of media interest, um, there was a bit of pessimism about the capacity to get funding, but um, through good work of staff, we were able to get some funding and mitigate the costs uh, given that they were out of our control, so well done. Yep, thanks for raising that. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, for your report. Uh, question time for the public. Responses to previous questions are taken on notice at item six. There are none. Questions from the public. I'm going to open public question time. Uh, now the time is 6.09 uh, p.m. The time set aside for public questions is 15 minutes, which may be extended if necessary for recording purposes. I'll ask you to step forward. I think I've got Mr Gray here to uh, state your name and address and then proceed to ask your question. If an answer cannot be provided at tonight's meeting, the question will be taken on notice and an answer will be provided at the next ordinary council meeting. In accordance with policy AD02, members of the public who have registered their questions with the city's administration shall be called upon in the order in which registrations were received. Written questions will precede verbal questions. The City has received questions for tonight's meeting, the first of which are from Mr Gray of Melrose Street in Rossmoyne. Thank you. Would you like to ask your question? Yes. Um, good evening, Mayor and Councillors. Thank you for allowing me to uh, address the Council. Our pleasure. 
My name is Bevis Gray and I live at 29 Melrose Street, Rossmoyne, and I've been a ratepayer since 1976, so I'm nearly a 50-year uh, club man. My question is, um, my whole uh, th thing tonight is a little bit about street trees, um, and my specific question is, is that the, has council directed staff not to implement clause C of the tree planting, tree <coughs> planting policy? No, I can categorically tell you they have not. Okay. Uh, that uh, still applies. I understand. I asked staff for a briefing today, Mr Gray, knowing that your question had been received. I understand it's in relation to a question over overhanging uh, property boundaries. Director uh, Warren Bow is the responsible director for that, and I spoke to him shortly before the meeting, uh, and staff, will actually, uh, staff are happy to contact you and review uh, what's actually occurred out there and, uh, and speak to you directly in relation to that, if that's what you would like. I'd appreciate that. I've tried five times already and uh, it would be much appreciated. Well, sometimes the personal touch works, so I'm very glad you came down this evening and spoke to us as a council. But yes, uh, yes Mr uh, Bow or one of his senior staff will be in touch uh, directly. Have I, have, I got, have I got the opportunity to continue with a few comments on street trees? Now, just in relation to street trees, uh, so this is public question time, so I can only uh, get you to ask a question. If you've got a question, uh, we can entertain it, uh, but this is not... Uh, uh, okay. We can't ask you to stand up there and make basically a, a running commentary on how you feel about uh, what might happen. You can certainly send that to me if you'd like to do so in writing, and I can distribute that to the entire council and to the CEO. I'd be very happy to do that. But the order of business for these meetings is pretty rigid, as you'd expect, so... Well, I'll, I'll try a question then that, yeah, go ahead. that, that hopefully summarises what my explanation and uh, other comments were. Uh, can an additional clause be added to the street policy stating, council staff be directed to implement a regular street tree pruning program based on an acceptable and horticultural responsible manner to keep the street trees not looking out of control and not leaving future administrations with the task of dealing with very large trees, which it seems to be occurring in I'll get our, Director Bo to address district. that, but yeah, we can certainly uh, review and bring back uh, for review any policy of the Council, so that's not beyond the realms of possibility, but Director Bo, I'll ask you to address uh, that thank you. question. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Mr Gray, uh, the City undertakes a, a triannual inspection of all our street trees uh, and also identifies, uh, through a quantitative risk assessment, uh, those street trees that pose an inordinate or an additional risk uh, to the public, and we also operate a annual street tree maintenance program. Um, I wouldn't feel it's necessary to embed that maintenance service uh, through policy, uh, but yeah, we have a significant budget. Uh, we have a significant uh, body of work that is required to address our street tree maintenance, and I, by and large, I, I feel we do a pretty good job on doing it. Thank you. Anything further, Mr Gray? No, no. I, I would have liked to have made some more comments, but. As you, as you say, say, it's question time and I abide by the question I appreciate time. that. Well, thank you very thank much. You very and much. thank you for coming this evening. A safe trip home. Uh, and like I said, if you'd like to send those comments in, I'd be happy to distribute to them to the council uh, and someone from our staff will contact you directly. Thank you, Mr Gray. Uh, the second questions we have were from Mr uh, Aldridge, R. Aldridge of Monoda Avenue in Shelley. Uh, the first question, I'll read the questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, how much money is in the land and building reserve from property sold by the City of Canning? The second question is, what is the total value of property sold by the City of Canning since the establishment of the land and building reserve? The third question is, what is the value of land purchased by the City of Canning since the establishment of the land and building reserve. Um, I've spoken to the relevant director, the director of Canning and Corporate and Commercial, uh, and that those questions will require a little bit of research, uh, and so they will be taken on notice this evening. Is that correct? Thank you very much, director. Are there any other questions from the gallery before we move on with the order of business? Thank you, everyone. I'll close public question time now then at 6.14pm, uh, uh, and we'll move on to the confirmation of minutes at item 7. Uh, confirmation of minutes at the Ordinary Council meeting uh, minutes from the meeting held on the 21st of March 2023 be confirmed as circulated. The recommendation is on page two of the agenda and is also on screen. Can I have a mover, please? I'll move that from the chair then. Seconder would be Councillor Bain. Uh, I obviously have nothing to add. Uh, let's put this to the vote.
Our motion to confirm the OCM minutes from March has been carried unanimously with all 11 in favour. Uh, thank you, Governance. We move to item 8, the receiving of petitions, presentations and deputations at items 8.1 through to 3. Uh, there are none this evening. We move on to item 9, applications for leave of absence. None have been received by Council. Uh, we move on to item 10, questions by members on which due notice has been given. Uh, no due notice has been uh, received. We move on to item 11, items brought forward for the convenience of those in the public gallery. Uh, there are none being brought forward this, uh, this evening. Reports of committee meetings at 12. I have no reports from committee meetings. The first report this evening is at item 13 of tonight's agenda. From the office of the CEO, there are no reports from the office of the CEO. Item 13.2, uh, the responsible officer being Ms Lorraine O'Driscoll, the Director of Corporate and Commercial, to my left, uh, to the meeting's right. The item is CC 007 of 23, the title of the report being Monthly Financial Report, March 2023. The recommendation is on page five of the agenda and is also on screen. Councillors, can I have a mover for that item, please? Councillor Spencer Teo, thank you. A seconder, Councillor Parkinson, thank you. Councillor Spencer Teo. Um, I support the officer's recommendation. I have nothing more to say. Thank you, Mr. May. Thank you, Councillor Parkinson. Yeah, I support the recommendation. Nothing further to add. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. We'll put the matter to the vote. Motion CC-00723 has been carried unanimously with all 11 in favour. Thank you, Governance. We move to item 13.3 on this evening's agenda. The responsible officer being Mr Graham Bride, the Director of Planning and Development. The item is CD-004 of 23. The title of the report being Initiation of Scheme Amendment Number 13 to Local Planning Scheme Number 42, Additional Use in Brackets Medical Centre, uh, 23 Mill Street, uh, in brackets again, lot eight, Cannington. <coughs> Excuse me. The recommendation is on page 41 of tonight's agenda and is on screen. Can I have a mover, please, for that item? <laughs> Councillor Bain, thank you. Councillor Sabiri, you will be the seconder. Councillor Bain. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, I support the uh, initiation of the amendment, which uh, could potentially see the uh, area uh, surrounding and in proximity to. Uh, the Bentley Hospital becoming a health precinct. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bain. Councillor Sabiri. Nothing to add. Thank you. Councillors, anyone wish to speak uh, either for or against the matter? If not, I'll put it to the vote. Thank you. We'll put the matter to the vote. Motion CD00423 has been carried unanimously with all 11 in favour. Thank you. We move to CD005 of 23, the title of the report being Metropolitan Region Scheme Amendment and Land Exchange to Support the Kenning Vale Sporting Complex. The officer's recommendation is on page 50 of the agenda and is on screen. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Sabiri. Thank you, Councillor Sabiri. A seconder? Councillor Jacobs, thank you. Councillor Sabiri. Um, I, I support the officer recommendation. I think it has good environmental outcomes, so nothing to add. Thank you. Councillor Jacobs. Uh, I just think it's important that we get ahead of this as um, doing things with the MRSA take time, and this is a long-term vision of the city to have a sport precinct down in uh, Canningvale and I was waiting for one of the Canningvale um, councillors to second it, but I'll second it. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on the matter before we put it to the vote? Thank you. We'll put the matter to the vote. <laughs> Thank you. 
Motion CD 00523 has been carried with 10 in favour, with Councillor Spencer Teo voting against the motion. Thank you. We move on to CD 006 of 23, the title of the report being Stage 2 of Janicott Eastern Link Road, Progress to Detailed Design Phase. The officer's recommendation uh, is on screen. Uh, it also appears on page 66 of the agenda. Just a reminder that Deputy Mayor Kunza previously declared an impartiality interest in that item. It was read, by the, uh, read to the meeting by the uh, CEO. I don't see any reason to reread that. And um, I will start by moving the item. Oh, Steve Parkinson, sorry. Councillor Parkinson has also declared a conflict of interest impartiality for that item. Um, I'm going to move the item from the chair. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Jacobs, thank you. Councillor um, Kunza, I understand that you've got a foreshadowed motion you'd like to put. Did you want to put that now before we start? Thank you. Councillors, I'll start by speaking in favour of uh, the Jandicott East Link Road, and I just want to make it uh, clear. I, I don't think we should try to confuse the matter too much tonight. We're simply being, matted, uh, being requested to proceed with to a detailed design of the Jandicott East Link Road. Uh, we are not being asked for anything more than that. Uh, many here will remember the controversial $1.6 billion Perth Freight Link project from 2013 through to 18, and the Row 8 extension, which protesters swore would significantly affect the Belia wetlands. An entire community and WA Labor rose up to protest, and their activism ultimately led, in my view, to the demise of the Barnett government. The strongest claims made during that protest were the destruction of foraging and nesting habitat for endangered black cockatoos. Media reports through that entire period from 2013 through to 2017 ec echoed the sentiment and concerns about uh, habitat, particularly around um, black cockatoos. Protests were widespread. It was the hottest media topic statewide. Hundreds, if not thousands of people were involved in protest action. Many arrests were made. And it essentially led, again in my view, to the fall of the Liberal government. Councillors, the Jandicott Eastern Link Road is not row eight. There are no protesters. Our community has not risen up to oppose it. Our public gallery tonight is not packed with protesters, nor do we have a single deputation speaking against the proposal. The Environmental Protection Agency does not propose to oppose the project. The state government, the same state government which opposed Row 8, is fully supportive and is contributing more than $5 million in funding to the project. The same state government. And key stakeholders, including Jandicott Airport and our neighbours at the city of Coburn, are supportive of the project in principle and have provisionally agreed to contribute significant funds towards it. It seems that the only opposition to this project is from sections of this council. Who then are we elected to represent? Ourselves and our own personal views, despite the merit of those views, of course, or the views of our residents. I'm a little bit uncertain about who we're actually representing tonight because it seems clear to me on the evidence in front of us that our community has not condemned this project. What I do know is just a 0 0.6 hectare of a, of a hectare 0.6 of a hectare of bush containing a variety of flora, including banksia, will be affected. But putting aside that affected 0.6 hectares uh, for one minute, there are 10 full hectares of bush forever at the site, more than 85 hectares of bushland of varying quality nearby at and around Jandicott Airport, another 53 hectares of bushland at the adjacent Kenhurst Park, and in compensation for the affected 0.6 of a hectare, nearly 65 full hectares of degraded bushland will be revegetated in compensation uh, at, uh, by this council. Further, a small population of kangaroos will be translocated instead of euthanized, and this council has agreed to spend $250,000 in doing so. Such has been the commitment by this council to do what is right. But councillors, sometimes local councils and their councillors are required to consider the importance of projects such as the Jandicott Eastern Link Road on a state or regional scale. The Jandicott Eastern Link Road connects two significant commercial precincts across two separate local governments and connects those districts more effectively with the largest airport in Western Australia outside of the Perth Airport. And it unlocks a disused and degraded tract of contaminated land for potential commercial use by the City of Canning. If Council fails to support the recommendation before it tonight, it'll essentially be agreeing to hand back more than $5 million in funding to the State Government. It'll forego additional provisional funding by the Cities of Coburn and the Jandicott Airport Authority, 
It will turn its back on the construction of a road which links together two vital industrial precincts and it will waive the opportunity to unlock an important and valuable parcel of industrial land owned in freehold. Is it complicated? Yeah, it, perhaps it is. This is a complicated uh, matter, but the benefit to our community for generations to come should not be outweighed by the questionable environmental value of a significantly small piece of land, just 0.6 hectares, located inside what is essentially a rubbish tip. A tough decision will be made tonight, and that decision cannot be based on friendships or loyalty. It's a business decision. I remind Council that tonight we are simply being asked to provide funding to enable detailed drawings for the Jandicott Link Road, though I fully understand that by agreeing to the recommendation, Council is, I guess, endorsing by proxy uh, support for the project. All of us here are fully committed to our environment, and that commitment has been demonstrated by this Council's investment in a broad range of environmental initiatives, including the City's Urban and Forest Strategy, our enduring investment in the Canning River Eco Education Centre, our adoption of the Local Biodiversity Strategy, and a variety of projects, including our multi-million dollar transformation of the Wharf Street Basin. Council, I'm just going to ask for a further uh, 60 seconds, if you don't mind, uh, to uh, finish off what I'd like to say. Uh, I need to put that to the vote. Can I move that? I don't. Thank you. I'll just extend just for another minute. Just in the last week, the city purchased the first electric ride on mower in use by a Western Australian local government. And only yesterday, I was at Creek launching the Agents for Environmental Change Conference aimed at our youth. This council has shown and continues to show its solid and genuine commitment to the environment. But running a council can't be done only about environment. We must strike a balance between environmental concerns and our sworn responsibility to manage the finances of this council responsibly and to plan ahead for the generations to come. It's not about us today. Our recent similar decision to progress the Southern Link Road in Kennington City Centre, despite some environmental concerns, should guide your decision making this evening. Showing support for environmental concerns should not require a highly respected council to hand back more than $5.3 million in state government funding and to choose not to progress a road of significant regional importance. Councillors, I urge you to support the recommendation before you and to simply allow the project to take its next step and to simply move to detailed drawings. I know some of you have had preconceived ideas about how you might vote tonight. I'd like us just to come back to a position where as a council we're making solid financial decisions based on the recommendation of the city and the report we have in front of it. I know we don't all agree, but we've got a decision to make tonight and we need to do it for the whole community. Uh, and I haven't seen anybody uh, protesting in relation to this matter. Uh, and the only objections we've had so far, I believe, are from uh, our council. So let's get this done. I speak in support of it. Thank you. Councillor Jacobs. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I support the recommendation. I think it's important that we do a detailed design of this project. It's uh, $7 million all up, 5.332 million from the Main Roads State Government. I think it's a, a logical step in the expansion of the, the city. Um, in, in Canningville, and let's be brutally honest, like there's not many more spaces to expand. Um, what you're going to find is as the city, as the, the metropolitan area expands, the, there may be a tendency for industrial to move out to the centres like in Gosnells and, and Armadale, and if you're not careful, they will, they will cut your lunch. Um, an example is used to be a Kmart warehouse uh, just inside Canningville, that's gone. So if we're not if we don't show business and the area of vision, someone else will. Um, the environment, if you look at the map on page, I think it's 67, it's um, location map. The environmental conservation area is extremely generous. If you look at the other side near um, Jandicott, I mean, it's all pretty much been uh, built up. Um, you know, gone are the days where Jandicott Airport was this, you know, little little airport in the bush. It's actually Australia's busiest per number, um, busiest airport. And uh, the Royal Flying Doctor flies out of there and a lot of other flight schools and even mining companies. So I think it's a very um, important area. And 
if you're going to the airport, obviously you need good roads to go to and from the airport. Um, this will link, if, if I look at it, it pretty much links the, the airport. And let's be face it, that airport's not just an airport anymore. That's an industrial precinct. And a lot of people go there because they get the federal government's, um, they get into a federal zone. So that a lot of, that's where Kmart went. That's where a lot of the big, I think GE, GE's down there. Um, big, some big American multinationals are down there. So it's really important to get those links in there for canning. Otherwise, other people will cut our lunch for us and they'll eat our lunch. So I support it. Um, I also wanted to make mention that um, I was also going to make mention of the Southern Link, and I hope people that voted for that could see the benefit of this. Um, I think it's a very good outcome. Um, actually, if it was me, I probably wouldn't be so uh, generous with the environmental conservation area, but take that as a win. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much my um, arguments, Mr Mayor. Um, I think it's important that we vote for it, and I trust that councillors will make, make a informed and... Uh, balanced decision on this tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Anyone wish to speak uh, against the matter? Count, uh, Deputy Mayor, you've got uh, a foreshadow you, motion you'd like to propose. Uh, yeah, I'll foreshadow uh, an alternative should this not get up. I'll get staff to put that on the screen now. So the Deputy Mayor has proposed, proposed an alternate motion. Uh, if the motion in front of Council uh, is not supported, uh, we will then move to debate uh, this motion. I'll just get everybody to uh, take your time to read it, and if we can't fit it all on the screen, we will scroll up slowly so you can see it all. <coughs> Deputy Mayor, whilst uh, Council's digesting that, I'll get you to um, start. Uh, uh, thank you. Through the Chair. Look, I can't support this road proceeding as I can't in good conscience uh, support the environmental damage. Um, just with reference to some of the comments that have been made, I don't know why this is being compared to Row 8. Row 8 was actually part of the Stephen he Stevenson Hepburn plan from the 1950s, a long, long planned road um, that I might say, despite all that environmental damage referenced by the Mayor, received EPA approval. Um, the EPA doesn't have a history of declining any of these projects. Uh, with respect to uh, whether people are knocking on our door. People are. Uh, there's been extensive media coverage about the amount of damage to the Banksy Wood land around Jandicott Airport, um, especially to the southwest with the recent announcement on the uh, wave park. But not that long ago, um, in fact, just over a decade ago, uh, this area contained an abundance of Banksy Wood land around Jandicott Airport. I mean, Councillor Jacobs has just referenced all the development on the other side that has occurred. However, we've seen development after development. The area has been cleared immensely. Over 200 hectares of Banksy woodland has been bulldozed in just over the last 10 or so years. Further clearing is taking place. As I said, the proposed wave park on the southwest side and the adjacent commercial development. In 2016, Banksy woodland on the Swan Coastal Plain was listed federally as an endangered species. Around 60% has been cleared from the southwest, including almost everything in metropolitan Perth. And what is left is fragmented. Here in the city of Canning, we talk about the environment. Over 94% of the Banksy woodland that existed pre-European settlement has been cleared. Canning was once home to over 5,000 hectares of Banksy woodland. Now only a few hundred hectares remain, and it's reducing. Protection under the Federal Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act is supposed to prevent further destruction of Banksy woodland. However, for whatever reason, the EPA continues to approve its clearing under the rationale that there's more vegetation elsewhere. Soon there will be no elsewhere. Offsets are just a way to make people feel better, but you can't replace Banksy Woodland. As Professor Kingsley Dixon once said when commenting on the Town of Victoria Park's urban forest program, just in my short lifetime, the very fabric of our southwest bushland our famous Banksia woodlands that I used to walk through as a kid from Durian Bay to Bustleton is a threatened ecological community. We can never rebuild the Banksia woodlands like it was before. The Carnabies, for example, have, visit, have been visiting the town for potentially 200,000 years when it was only Banksia woodland. So how well we manage the health and the future of Carnabies really is the bellwether of the Vic Park's biodiversity success. We're supposed to have similar aspirations here in Canning. Southwestern Australia is a biodiversity hotspot, but is one of the most cleared places on this planet. 
There has, this has come to a great cost to animals like Acarnabee's cockatoos, who have historically gone to the wheat belt to breed and to the coast to feed. Sadly, their breeding hollows in the wheat belt have largely been cleared. Their foraging habitat on the Swan Coastal Plain has been removed for housing, and their habitat in the Perth Hills has been removed for mining. We as a society have been chopping down their traditional food sources, and they are starving. If approved, this road poses a significant risk to black cockatoos. It's not just my opinion, it's stated as a fact by Astron Consulting, who prepared an environmental <coughs> impact assessment on the Janica Eastern Link Road on behalf of the Department of Planning. The report stated that the alignment is approximately five kilometres from a confirmed breeding area for Carnamy's black cockatoos, well within the 12 kilometre radius that has been identified as the most important foraging, heritage, foraging area surrounding a nest site. Maintaining the availability of foraging habitat is especially important in the breeding range as sufficient foraging habitat within a six to 12 kilometre radius of breeding sites is necessary to successfully raise chicks. Maintaining foraging habitat is also particularly important in the Perth metropolitan area due to the role of these feeding areas in the survival of young birds and the maintenance of population between breeding season, coupled with the lack of habitat remaining in the region and its connectivity values. Based on the results of the field survey, Astron advises that the project area pose, poses a significant risk to black cockatoos as clearing of more than one hectare of quality foraging habitat and clearing in areas surrounding black cockatoo breeding, foraging and night roosting habitat is proposed. But we already know this. The city invested significant funding and resources into producing its local biodiversity strategy a number of years ago to improve our biodiversity and protect what we have. The strategy states that with less than 10% of the pre-European extent of native vegetation retained in the city of Canning, all remaining natural areas are high priority for conservation. This is one of those locations where quality habitat remains. It's important. It's an important ecological linkage. The strategy highlights that fragmenting Banksia woodland leads to the decline in the overall health of Banksia woodland. The land surrounding Janico Airport is one of the last remaining areas where animals like black cockatoos can shelter with minimal human interference. I mean, Councillor Jacobs talks about very few places left to expand. I'll just Sorry, can I just over request? Five minutes, so I'll just I'll do, I won't be too much longer. Yeah, of course. Just finish off then, please. Uh, it'll just be a, a minute or two. There are very few places to expand, so we're just going to expand into what little environmental areas we have. It's home to endangered animals like the quenda and the rainbow bee eater, birds, reptiles, flora and vertebrates. This project area of the road is over 10 hectares, including 2.7 hectares of the Bush Forever Site 388. But that's not the only concern. It's the fact that it splits the entire area in half, causing a significant danger for local wildlife. You can't just build a tunnel under the road and think that the animals are gonna to know to go use it. One of the main causes for black cockatoo deaths is vehicle strikes. A dual carriageway intersecting the last remaining Banksia woodland is not gonna help this cause. Only a few months ago, the city put up a very popular Facebook post educating people about the importance of protecting quenders and slowing their cars down and watching out for them when driving. Wouldn't it be better to just not build a road through their home? How often do you see wildlife trying, to cross like, uh, wildlife trying to cross roads like Albany Highway, Leach Highway, to get to water sources like the Wharf Street Basin? This is what we're going to see if we build this road. Now, note the proposed financial benefits as outlined in the report. However, at what point do we decide that the environmental consequences are too significant? Private sector developers might look just at the financial side, but we as a local government, with clear environmental objectives, surely we need to take a stand. The report outlines a number of things we can do to achieve environmental gain, and the thing is, we can do it without the road. It's not like the Southern Link Road where we needed access to uh, other people's land. We can invest more into plantings around the proposed Canning Vale Sports Precinct as what staff have proposed. We can close Govan and Loughlin Roads, and we can invest into the rehab of degraded bushland. It's our land and we can do it. I recognise that staff will be disappointed. However, this is my first chance to have my say on the merits of this road. And having seen firsthand for years the trauma of vehicle strikes and starving black cockatoos, I can't support the road. I support revegetating and providing a wildlife corridor. We do have a choice here, and that's to protect the Ranford Road bushland, and that's what I believe council should do, and I ask that that's what you decide. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Spencer Teo. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, I just have a couple of quick questions, if I may. Of course, go ahead. Um, what public consultation, I mean public consultation, not stakeholder engagement, have we done in respect to this road? Uh, director. Thank you. 
Uh, three, Mr Mayor. Um, there's been the MRS amendment process, so that was undertaken by the State Government when the alignment of the Janaquil Eastern Link Road uh, went through the area, so that was a consultation period undertaken by the State Government, including all landowners and relevant uh, stakeholders, government agencies as well. Uh, and there was also the uh, the Janicott uh, Airport Master Plan project, which was also extensively advertised uh, to the community. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the city's own strategies, we've got the integrated transport strategy, which was advertised to the community, and that did uh, involve, involve uh, you know, community comment through that process. So there's been a number of strategies and uh, documents that have been advertised. But specifically Councilor? not just on the road itself, is that correct? Director, was it required? <laughs> Sorry, you're saying were they advertised? The, the advertising was about the Janicot East Link Road, yes. Specifically, or it was about a master plan that included the road? Uh, the, through Mr Mayor, the, the MRS amendment process was specifically in relation to the alignment of the road. Uh, the Janicot Airport Master Plan did include that as an important link, but that obviously included other aspects. Um, the integrated transport strategy in 2015 included a number of priority projects. Uh, this one was one of the few priority projects identified in that strategy, so it was very prominently uh, identified in that strategy. Thank you. And just secondly, um, my understanding is that the recommendation was to cull the kangaroos, which is death by bullet, not euthanise them. Um, can I just confirm that that was true? Euthanasia is a, an, an injection? Uh, Where the animals Bob. put to sleep. Uh, through Mr. Mayor, I might ask uh, Manager Johnson to answer that question if you can. Oh, I can answer that question, Mr. Mayor. Director, Mr. Mayor, um, there, there was no report uh, that was presented to myself or to the executive or to council, which made a recommendation, as far as I'm aware, to euthanise the kangaroos uh, on that site. Um, I'm aware that there was a draft report which considered that as an option. Uh, but that was never an endorsed uh, document by uh, the executive or ever presented this, to this council. Um, that wasn't really my question. My question was clarification over the difference between euthanasia and culling. They're two different things. Uh, look, maybe I'll just make a, pu a personal statement under uh, 715 uh, just to clear the matter up since I raised it. I didn't mean to cause any confusion other than to say that council committed... Uh, $250,000 to translocating those kangaroos uh, other than a raft of other arrangements that could have been made, uh, including euthanasia. So I didn't, I didn't mean to uh, cause any controversy, only to say that we've spent a great deal of money uh, doing what we feel is right. Councillor Spencer, to you. I'll speak now, if I may. Sorry? I'll speak now, if I may. You can. I was referring to clause at 7.15, personal statements. Yes. Yeah, you finished though, haven't you? Yes, I have. Go yes, ahead. Yes, thank you. OK. Um, so clearly I don't support this officer recommendation. Um, it's important to remember that this road was originally part of the Jandicott Airport Master Plan and it was endorsed by the commissioners. It was not endorsed by an elected council. Mm -hmm. Councillors, we really need to sit back and ask ourselves, who is really asking for and who is benefiting from this road? Is it the Canning community? We know other than Main Roads WA, we're paying for the most and we are certainly leading the project. But are we really receiving the most benefit? In the past year, <clears throat> we've been told there's several advantages to us if we build this road, and they are. It opens up the access for our Canning Vale industrial area. Yet when we ask which Canning Vale businesses have asked for the road or can directly benefit from the road, not one business has been named. We've been told employees of Janticott Airport who reside in Canning Vale would benefit from having several minutes taken off their journey to and from work each day, but we can't be told how many employees of the Janticott Airport actually live in Canning Vale. We've been told that the road is required for people to access the Canning Vale Sporting Complex, yet we don't have a business case or sufficient funding to uh, progress this. We've received funding from main roads and we may be subjected to reputational damage if we don't receive. Is it just me? I can honestly not see any proof that Canning actually stands to benefit the most from this road. Now let's talk about our local biodiversity strategy and our award-winning urban forest strategy. When residents ask for a verge tree, we tell them which one that they can have as it must support our biodiversity strategy. If a ratepayer wants a verge tree removed, 
The importance of mature tree retention is outlined in both, as outlined in both strategies, is explained in great detail and it's justified to deny the request. Not that I'm disagreeing with this, I just want to make that very clear. When residents request mass tree planting along roads, reserves or in parks close to roads, they're told that it's not always possible because we don't want to attract birds, especially cockatoos who feed off the trees, as they're at greater risk of vehicle strikes. So we need to ask, if trees can't go near roads, why can roads go near trees that are known habitats for endangered birds? We are constantly having these two strategies used to support the retention of trees. However, when it comes to the city's administration wanting a road, these strategies hardly even get a mention. So why do we even have them? This road doesn't only wipe out a portion of the Bush Forever site, but it further divides a very important ecological corridor and smacks a road right between it. Our urban forest strategy, sorry, our local biodiversity strategy states habitat loss and fragmentation are recognised as one of the key threatening processes to biodiversity conservation in urban and peri-urban landscapes. The same strategy says formalising the protection status for all bush for areas should be the highest priority to improve the current protection status of remaining vegetation. And the most feasible option to do that is to introduce a local environmental conservation reserve classification into the LPS. Finally, councillors, let us remember who authored these strategies and how much community support they received. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna to stick to these strategies and I'm gonna support the foreshadowed motion, which means this site remains bush forever, not becomes bush for now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spencer. Tio, anyone wish to speak in favour of the motion? Anyone wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Hardeep Singh, then I'll come to Councillor uh, Sweeney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I cannot support this motion. In addition to the environmental concerns raised by Deputy Mayor, we are asking ratepayers money, $1.546 million to be invested in this project. I have asked multiple questions to the city officers to understand the value of money which our ratepayers are getting back for spending these $1.546 million. The benefits which are listed in the report are based on too many assumptions. There are no certain benefits we, which we will get, and if there are, there isn't a monetary value to those benefits. I would love to support development and roads as long as it is providing a benefit to our ratepayers and it is not affecting our environment to a great extent. Hence, I cannot support this project. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Singh. Councillor Sweeney. Yes, thank you. I think a lot of what I heard tonight, um, and if the community are listening, I think it tends to confuse um, rather than make clear what is going on with this road down at Canningvale. Um, and as far as the foreshadowed motion is concerned by Councillor Kunz, I'm not really sure what that is. I know it came in at the last minute. I haven't had time to read all of it, but I'm quite bewildered. Um, why would we, why we would, why we would derail this um, out of a concern for the environment? And I would like to just talk about that just for one sec because it's quite pertinent. Two years ago, or just over two years ago, Metronet came in to Canningvale on Ranford Road in the middle of the night and chopped down hundreds of trees in the in the carriageway, in the main carriageway. They destroyed flora and fauna, massacred black cockatoos, spifflicated nests, spifflicated eggs all over the road. There was black feathers all over the place and not one person cared about this at this council. Not one person spoke up about it. The administration didn't even know about it. I was the only one that raised and posed a question on what happened that night with main roads. And when the council, or when the administration rang up, and asked about this. The main roads confirmed that it occurred and the reply was, yeah, sort of, uh, whoops, we forgot to tell you. So I am somewhat mystified at the 11th hour, why would we look at trying to derail this? I feel that the Jandicott Eastern Link is going to happen anyway. If we keep stalling it, the government will only get frustrated and they will just roll over the top of us. It has been signed off by the relevant government agencies, including Dewar. Lots 166 and 167 
uh, have little or no significant environmental value, according to Dewar. One is a former sand pit. Um, to stall this now, it just seems to me like we're greenwashing here. There has been considerable money spent over the years to progress this on behalf of the community. It has been part of our advocacy of priorities every year in our financial statements and in our budgetary financial planning. Everybody has known about this for many, many years. If we knock this back, I feel our reputation as a council will be damaged. And instead of getting on with the job, we will be seen by our community as indecisive, stalling again, and not relevant in considering the community's needs. The Cannondale Sports Complex has been on our radar for 20 years. This is not new. It comes up every year. It almost comes up at every second meeting. Ratepayers have spent a lot of money for reports from independent con consultants over the years that indicate a tremendous shortage of sporting facilities for our youth. And that's what this is about. All the yeses, all the other stuff is just really white noise as far as I'm concerned. There is a unidentified lack of sporting facilities throughout the city of Canning for our youth. We are fortunate to have a space in Canningvale that can sort this out. And with the assistance of the state government and the federal government, this can happen. It won't happen today, it won't happen tomorrow. But this road is the first link for that to occur. Our sporting clubs are continuing to grow and we can't accommodate their needs. The state government has given us a considerable injection of finances right now and we need to work with them. Let's be decisive and make the right decision for the immediate needs of our community right now. Consider the youth of this community and the shortages that are facing sporting facilities, which there are none when it comes to the city of Canning. And I would strongly recommend that all councillors <coughs> consider what I have said and support this recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Sweeney. Anyone else wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Shen Sekon. Just following on from um, Councillor Singh earlier, whilst the city has secured some form of funding, it does not cover the entire cost of Jandicott Eastern Link Road. Financially, I believe that the city's finances can be better spent on other projects at this stage. Secondly, while I can't control developments that could happen in the future, while on council today, I can make a difference by choosing to conserve our environment for our future generation. And therefore, I won't be supporting the motion today. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Anyone else wish to speak? Thank you, councillors. Uh, I will then uh, close debate on the matter, uh, and I'll only do so quickly uh, with respect to all those that have uh, spoken and those obviously that have not. Uh, just a, a, a bit of rebuttal. Uh, look, uh, Councillor Kunza spoke only about the environment. I didn't hear anything other than just talking about environment. But my point on that would be that, look, that we need to strike a balance uh, here. Our, uh, we are an urban environment. It's a rubbish tip site. It's an industrial area. We need to be able to find a compromise in an urban environment between environment and also um, our requirements as a city. Uh, that's all I've got to say uh, as far as rebuttal for Councillor Kunza, only that, um, you know, I was a little disappointed to hear nothing other than just the environmental, because there's so much, so many moving parts in this uh, project. Uh, Councillor Teo uh, mentioned about who wants this project, who is asking for it. I guess who's not a, who who is against it, uh, other than this council, which represents people that are not saying they don't want it. So uh, I don't understand the opposition to it. We don't benefit from this uh, road the most, is what Councillor Spencer Teo said. I don't think it's always the case though with uh, projects that you know exactly at the time that the projects are bedded down, exactly who will benefit the most in the long run. And that's why state and federal and regional projects uh, sometimes occur and people are left scratching their heads and then it's not until later down the track people understand, uh, uh, you know, like I guess uh, the rail project uh, through the uh, freeway. 
the freeway itself, the Mitchell Freeway and the Quinana Freeway when that was built. I'm not absolutely certain that uh, significant and massive investment in infrastructure was understood by everyone, and I'm certain that it wasn't demanded by everybody. Uh, and I don't know if we all knew who would benefit the most from that project, but now we wonder how we would do without it. Um, I don't want to say anything other than people have spoken against it. Uh, there's an opportunity to change your mind on that. Uh, this is a business decision. We are supporting our environment to the nth degree. This is one project that is important to this region and we have the eyes of the state government and those that are, are supporting the project and I wonder if we will ever see a funding commitment of this magnitude put to this council again. Uh, we won't see this 5.3 million again, I wouldn't think. And that's a real disappointment for me as a council, uh, as a mayor. I, I really uh, think it's, um, yeah, it's not ideal. Uh, we talked about relationships and at the moment we have had such a significant relationship with state and federal government. We've seen investment we've never seen before in the city of Canning in the last couple of years, but that's because they've got confidence that this is a progressive council that gets things done and makes decisions. If we're gonna start knocking over multi-million big regional projects, because we're not sure about the environmental impact that really is 0.6 of a hectare. I'm not sure where this council is heading if that's how we're going to actually uh, be making decisions in the future. We need to find compromise as an urban council. Uh, that's all I've got to say. I still strongly support it and I hope that it will have the support of a number of councillors here because I think we just have to go ahead and make a business decision. That's what big councils do and we are a big council. Thank you, let's put the matter to the vote. Motion CD00623 has been lost uh, with five in favour and the six councillors voting against the motion. Those councillors, Deputy Kunza, councillors Bain, Sabiri, Sakon, Singh and Spencer Teo. Uh, thank you. We move to the uh, foreshadowed alternate <coughs> motion then, staff. Uh, I'll get you to put that up on the uh, screen, please. Can we try to get, uh, is that the entire foreshadowed motion? Councillor, um, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor Kunza is obviously the uh, mover for that. Can I have a seconder for the foreshadowed motion? Councillor Sabiri. Thank you, Councillor Sabiri. Deputy Mayor, would you like to uh, start on the uh, foreshadowed motion? Uh, yes, I will. Um, so my motion, which circulated earlier, uh, basically, uh, and apologies, um, a few comments have been made about last minute. Um, obviously, we received the agenda quite late and then I was sick for a number of days and didn't have the capacity to provide this sooner. Uh, but so uh, basically the alternative motion would be to notify MRWA of the council's decision and return the relevant funding that we've received uh, to uh, point two. Uh, so council's been briefed on the desire for the city to look at uh, rehabilitating parts of um, where the uh, Canning Vale Sports Precinct, uh, proposed Canning Vale Sports, Pre Sports Precinct will be built. And for that to proceed, um, for the city to seek external funding for the environmental rehabilitation, which is quite immense. And as uh, the reports have stipulated, there's been, uh, there's a, a significant environmental gains proposed. Uh, in order to get that funding, we need to uh, allocate funding for fencing. Unfortunately, to date, there is no fencing, uh, there is no funding for the fencing, and so uh, the, the proposal would be to put the funds set aside for detailed design of the road into providing that fencing and funding it so that the city can submit an application for external funding uh, in order to progress that project and see uh, environmental gain further in that area uh, as part of the Canning Vale Sports Precinct project. Um, with respect to amending LPS 42, it'd be to amend the reserve classification to ensure the whole of uh, Bush Forever Site 388 
is um, changed to environmental consideration and to close Govan and Loft Lane Road as what was proposed in the original officer report and to seek a, an amendment to the MRS, uh, which uh, the city did years ago, um, to uh, close that off and then to list appropriate funding for consideration in future budgets to allow the preservation, restoration and revegetation of the degraded bushland. Um, or there are portions of the proposed road that are degraded and so in order to provide the ecological linkage to connect it to the proposed revegetation at the County Rail Sports Precinct and Kenhurst Park and allow that um, ecological corridor to thrive, uh, we need to be planting and, and restoring the degraded vegetation. So I think it's important to invest funds into that and ensure that it happens. Uh, I won't say anything further than that um, and ask for your support. Thank you, Councillor Sabiri. Um, I support the foreshadowed motion. Um, obviously, I'm also a bit surprised, but welcome this foreshadowed motion because um, this has been in front of council for a very long time. Um, in 2016, uh, before my time, it was supported um, into looking into Canning Vale Regional Sports Facility and the um, drafting of funding agreement. And after that, it's been to council a few more times, um, one time through the um, airport holdings that uh, Director um, Bry just mentioned. Um, and it has, hadn't had any kind of, I guess, the opposition. I probably was one person who voted against it. Um, but I'm, I'm happy with this change of heart. And I, I feel sorry for the officers because there's been so much work that's gone into this project to find the least environmental impacts. Um, and some may ask, is it up to Ben to find what the environmental impacts are? And uh, should we wait to see what the um, EPBC, which has been referred to currently, um, fine to see what um, the outcomes are there, um, I guess. Uh, and the other thing would, I'm, I've always been from start being on this council, I've been against having more roads. Um, I, I don't think that's the solution, but some people also would say that um, we, we know that this project is going to go, to, um, go ahead some other time because there's uh, trains, train stations, and that's going to get busier. And uh, once we have the complex, if we do have the complex, that will also be, get busier. But um, you know, I really, really support what's what Ben's put in front of us now to re revegetate and um, keep the bushland. And he's right. Um, um, I can't remember last project that's gone to the EPA that's been rejected. So, and I don't think this would have been either. So. I support um, Deputy Mayor's um, foreshadowed motion and um, look forward to having more bush forever in the city of Cadding. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll speak, uh, call for speakers against the uh, foreshadowed motion, and there may be few. I'll speak against it. I've, I'll come to you in a moment, uh, Councillor Jacobs. Look, uh, I don't support it. Uh, I've got some real issues with it, and I'll just try to articulate them. I heard uh, Councillor Singh, and he does that consistently, raise concerns about spending and about benefit to the community. I'd ask you to cast your eyes to item three on the foreshadowed motion, which asks Council to write a blank check. Uh, there's no listed item there. We don't know what the benefit... Where's the benefit to the community to uh, upgrade uh, and revegetate um, a segment of land that no one can access uh, sitting, you know, basically adjacent to a rubbish tip site? We've been asked to put a provisional sum, some sort of listing appropriate funding, whatever appropriate funding might mean. Is appropriate funding $5 million? Is it $500,000? Is it 500000 a year? Well, we don't know because we haven't had that question answered and uh, we don't know what appropriate funding is. So tonight, Council will be asked to, uh, uh, by this, my reading of uh, the foreshadowed motion, to, to do the opposite of what it just did and to show um, little financial acumen by supporting an open-ended motion that doesn't have a dollar cent a, a dollar listed in there, but ask you just to uh, trust that someone here in the organisation will come up with what we deem to be an appropriate figure. I guess that'll be thrashed out by us personally uh, in um, the uh, in the budget workshops. I guess that's how that will occur. But 
I really uh, don't like a lack of clarity around these things. Uh, we had specific uh, numbers uh, in the item that was just de defeated. Uh, this is really open-ended. We started with a road project, a regional road project, which has now turned into an environmental project uh, for a tract of land that no one can access. They certainly can't access it by road now. Uh, so I'm not absolutely certain when people around this table talk about value to the community and benefit to the community, where the benefit proposition is in uh, putting your support behind this. So I'd invite people to come up with a, a solution or to uh, amend it or to request of me that we vote on these uh, separately, item by item. But I hope that when you've had the opportunity to read it, as I just had, because I'm disappointed too, we only just uh, saw these latest am amendments in the hour or so before we walked into this room for a massive project. So uh, we have to deal with what we've got in front of us, but I'm not so certain that I've got the information in front of me tonight to support what's there. So it's open to, uh, for the matter to be deferred. It's open for the matter to be split up. It's open for council to speak against it, but I'd expect some consistency in decision making here around the value proposition for our community. Uh, that's all I've got to say. I speak uh, strongly uh, against uh, the motion before us. Councillor Singh, you had a question? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, can I speak about the motion rather than asking Are you the question? Speaking in favour of it or against it? I'm actually. I would like to move a procedural motion to adjourn the debate until ordinary council meeting next month, because there is not enough information. Um, we received this foreshadowed motion only today, and as you mentioned, uh, I'm not against it. I'm not in favour of it. I just require more time to understand this motion to understand. Hence, I'm proposing a procedural motion to adjourn the debate until the May Ordinary Council meeting. Councillor Jacobs is uh, seconding the motion. You've already spoken, I guess, to the procedural motion under the standing orders to defer it. You're asking for it to be deferred to the May 2023 Ordinary Council meeting. And that's for the purpose of? Uh, that's for the purpose of understanding this motion in more detail and I would specifically request CEO to provide more details about the $250,000 figure. Um, that money was listed for Gender Court Eastern Link Road. Uh, where is that money coming from? Where it can be spent? Which budget it affects? CAPEX, OPEX? Any more details? And point number five, list appropriate funding. What does that mean? Um, as you mentioned, Mr. Mayor, how many millions of dollars or thousands of dollars we are just trying to understand the financials of this motion. Thank you. Councillor, there's no debate on a procedural motion. We'll put the motion to the vote. The uh, recommendation or the procedural motion is that the matter be uh, deferred to the council meeting of May 2023. Governance. Governance, I'll just get, we're going to put the vote in relation to the procedural motion. Okay. Thank you, councillors. Let's uh, put the vote. Waiting for your vote, councillor Sweeney. Yeah, I'm just trying to read what we're voting for here. Um, uh, just to adjourn it to the next meeting. Oh, okay. Procedural motion to adjourn this item to the May OCM has been carried with eight in favour and three voting against. Count, uh, Deputy Kunza, Councillors Sabiri and Spencer Teo voting against the procedural motion. 
Uh, thank you. Thank you, Governors. Uh, thank you, Councillors. We'll deal with that matter again. And I just urge uh, Councillors, if you've got any questions you'd like to uh, have queries answered, please uh, refer them to uh, the CEO in the first instance or to the relevant director, and we'll get those answers uh, circulated. Uh, we move to item 7.5, uh, the responsible officer being Dr Sarah McQuaid. There are no reports from the Director of Customer and Community tonight. At item 13.4, uh, the responsible officer being Mr Warren Bow, the Director of Infrastructure and Environment to my right. It's EN 005 of 23, the title of the report being 18 oblique 2022, panel of pre-qualified suppliers for fertilisers, pesticides, wetting agents and seeds. The recommendation is on page 100 of the agenda and is on screen. Can I have a mover, please, for that item? Jesse Jacobs, Councillor Jacobs, thank you. A seconder. Councillor Bain, thank you, Councillor Bain. Councillor Jacobs. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I support this motion. Councillor Bain, anything to add? I support the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillors. Anyone like to ask a question or add anything before we put the matter to the vote? Thank you. Let's put that matter to the vote. Motion EN 00523 has been carried unanimously with all 11 in favour. Thank you, Governance. We move to EN 006 of 23, the supply contract for disposal of general waste. The officer's recommendation is on page 112 of the agenda and is on screen. Can I have a mover for that item, please? Councillor Sabiri, thank you. And a seconder? Deputy Mayor uh, Ben Kunza. Councillor Sabiri? I'm speaking of... Um in support of the officer's recommendation, but tonight we're being asked again to spend more than $750,000 to dispose of 19,000 tonnes of municipal waste to get us through the six months beginning 1st of July 2023 with the possibility of renewing another three times. All this is in, on top of our financial and contractual commitments to Quinona Waste to Energy Plant. At what point do the delays to waste to energy become a breach of contract so we can consider cancelling the contract and choosing a more cost-effective and more deliverable option. Um, options that should be looking at strategies framed around the waste hierarchy, focused on dollars per tonne reductions, not airy-fairy ideas about transfer stations or waiting for visions of waste to energy plants to materialise. My biggest fear of all is that delays in construction are just beginning and the worst delays are likely to occur at commissioning. Such is this history of waste to energy plans. That said, I'll be supporting the officer recommendations but I will be working with my fellow councillors and the officers to deliver better solutions that support the waste hierarchy. Thank you. Councillor Sabiri, you asked a rele relevant and rhetorical question in relation to what would trigger uh, that uh, proposition in the contract if uh, the proponent fails to deliver. So are you able to answer the question or is that one you'd prefer not to answer at this stage? The question was posed by Councillor Sabiri. Uh, yeah, look, um, thank you, Mr Mayor. It, probably one that um, I don't want to uh, um, overreach um, tonight. So uh, I have committed to, uh, to providing Council with some feedback on that particular contract and um, understanding that negotiations uh, for an extended PC period are currently on foot. Uh, so uh, I will certainly do that. I will, uh, uh, I will present uh, at, uh, at a future SIB to, uh, to give you an understanding as to where those uh, negotiations are at. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Uh, yeah, um, it is a very frustrating situation we're in, but I support the officer recommendation and um, what's been proposed. It seems like a, a good outcome to deal with uh, the transitional uncertainty that we're currently in. Thank you. Anyone else have a question or wish to speak on the matter? Yeah, I support the uh, motion as well. I probably don't need to add that. I, I think we have no other choice. Uh, I agree with the um, com comments by Councillor Sabiri. It's a, it's a, um, not a very good position for this council to be in. It's one that we all highly regret, but we have no uh, control over at the moment. There are some uh, cost benefits and some benefits generally in relation to this uh, new agreement we will sign. Uh, but that can't be a long-term issue. Um, you know, the waste energy was to 
take care of a whole range of issues that are now bubbling up around plastic, soft plastic wrappings and a whole bunch of stuff that was supposed to have been in there already and it's not happening. And the sector itself has uh, considerable issues. We saw even today that I think CleanAway have gone on strike. All their rubbish trucks are all on strike. Uh, that'll affect uh, City of South Perth, Victoria Park. Uh, they won't have any bins being emptied there until that matter is resolved. So. The whole sector is in a state of uh, some flux, but we hope we can get it uh, dealt with. But in the short term, I certainly uh, support the only recommendation in front of us to extend the um, uh, current contract we have with Eastern Metropolitan Regional Council or to enter into contract with them. I speak in favour of it. Does anyone else wish to speak before we take it to the vote? Councillor Sabiri, no one's spoken against the recommendation, so with your blessing, uh, we will put it to the vote. <coughs> Thank you, councillors. Motion EN0623 has been carried unanimously with all 11 in favour. Uh, thank you, um, councillors. Uh, thank you, governance. We move to item 14, which is just about the last, uh, it is actually the last item on the agenda tonight. So notice a motion that's been proposed by uh, councillor Jesse Jacobs. It's notice a motion uh, 003 of 23. The title of the report, the title of the report is International Red Cross Oblique Crescent Donation for Earthquake Relief in Turkey and Syria. Um, the uh, recommendation is on screen. It also appears on page 117 of the agenda. And councillors, I'll remind you that the uh, item requires an absolute majority of council. Uh, Councillor, Spen uh, Councillor Jacobs is the uh, mover. Can I have a seconder, please, for the item? No seconder for the item. The item lapses. We will then move on to the next matter, which is 15, urgent business, of which uh, there is none this evening. Item 16, confidential matters, of which there are none. And at item 17, a closure, there being no further business, I now declare the meeting closed, the time being 7.16pm, uh, and I thank